Hi, this is your host, Sapin Bharti, and welcome to TFR Insights. Today, our guest is Aaron Newcomb, Director of Product Marketing at uh, Sysdig, and we are going to discuss the 2021 Container Security and Usage Report, which came out by Sysdig. Aaron, first of all, welcome to the show. Yeah, thanks for having me. Uh, you are also uh, uh, an author of the report, or the author of the report. And uh, if I'm not wrong, Sysdik has been doing this report for a couple of years, but this is your first one. So what I want to know from you is that when you were working on this report, what are some of the things that you noticed, either it's patterns or in, in interesting insights? Because, you know, while you work on this report uh, as your first report for Sysdik, you have been part of the community for a very long time. Yeah, that's right. Um, there are some things that were that we did expect to see, like things like container density, for example, uh, uh, um, uh, nodes pack, getting packed with more containers. We expected things like that, but there were also some things that we didn't expect to see. And probably the thing that jumped out to us the most was when we looked at the number of organizations that are actually scanning their images uh, in the build pipeline process before they go to production. Uh, that was a little bit of a surprise to us. It's a something we haven't looked at before, um, but we looked at it this year, and uh, it was really surprising because we saw uh, that 74% of organizations are doing some level of scanning of their images uh, in the CI/CD build process. So that was actually really good to see. Any other highlight that you were uh, either, of course, uh, once the report is out? Yeah. Absolutely. So we also saw that um, there's a shift in container registries. So uh, as you might expect, Docker is uh, diminishing somewhat. And I think that's uh, uh, especially relevant uh, given the announcement of uh, Kubernetes that they're going to be deprecating uh, the usage of Docker over time uh, at some point this year, I think they said. So uh, we do see a, a dramatic increase, a 4x increase in uh, container D and CRI CRIO usage. Uh, so that was kind of interesting. We hadn't seen that. This is our fourth year doing the report, as you said. We did not see that, obviously, in the first three reports. This is the first one where we've really seen a shift um, in terms of the type of uh, 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 runtime. Sorry if I said registries before. Runtimes that people are using. C uh, Container D and CRIO are definitely on the rise. One thing that uh, I have noticed, or we have all noticed, <laughs> and we are all kind of, you know, uh, Responsible for it or culprit that we all we kind of get obsessed with new buzzwords and new jargons. You know, <laughs> uh, of course, container Docker was also at one point, but you know whether it's zero trust or these days we hear a lot about you know shift left. You know, every you'll hear from almost everyone uh, as if it's some magical uh, solution. But the fact is that. Um, uh, that's not all, you know, you need to do more than that. So why is everybody uh, preaching or talking about shift left? But in reality, there's much more that organizations should be doing. Can you talk about that? Absolutely. No, that's a great point. And, and the data I mentioned earlier about people scanning uh, during the, the build uh, process for CICD is an indication to us, at least, that people are paying attention to shift left when it comes to container security. Uh, we've, you know, people look at shift left all the time, as you say, right? Uh, you know, what are you doing earlier in the process uh, to hopefully make sure that you can deploy more, you know, more quickly with with higher confidence in your releases? Um, but it, it definitely is not the only thing that needs to be looked at, right? It's a it's a good indication that you're doing things earlier to catch things sooner. But in this case, if we look a little bit further at some of the details in the report, we also found that 58% of containers that are running are actually running as root. Um, and you know the dangers that that can bring. So, and that's mainly due to configuration issues where things weren't configured properly, they were allowed to run as root when probably they shouldn't have. There'll always be some containers that need to run as root, um, but the vast majority of them do not and should not be running as root. So when you put those two things together, what you're seeing is that shift left doesn't catch everything. Shift left isn't a isn't a, a magic wand that you can wave over your DevOps teams to say, okay, you know, we've done a good job here. We're doing things much earlier in the build process than we used to, and now you know we can kind of uh, uh, rest, uh, uh, kind of just set back and, and see how things go. Right? You need to be constantly vigilant because even if you are shifting left, there's lots of things that can get through, especially configuration errors. Um, they they crop up all the time. 
And there are other examples in the report as well um, of indications where shifting left is not enough. I mean, I would highlight this is the second year, for example, that we've seen um, uh, container containers that live a very short amount of time. So even if you're shifting left, if those containers don't live very long, um, there could still be issues that you're not catching because you don't have the right tools or processes in place to catch things um, when they only live you know, 10 seconds, 15 seconds. Right, and of course, we also talk about function as a service. One more thing, when we talk about uh, security, uh, we are talking only at this level, but we have to look at the whole environment because um, even if the joke is, you know, the Kubernetes is the Linux of the cloud, the Linux of the cloud is still Linux. There is still, you know, <laughs> they're running on operations and the kernel is still there. So uh, just focusing on one area can also lead to a street lamp effect where you are only looking where the light is, you are ignoring everything else. So even if you're scanning, what? So can you talk about, you know, uh, whether it was part of the report or not, but also part of your journey and Cystic's approach that you know there should be a holistic approach towards security. And security is going to become really important, especially in this post-pandemic world where more and more companies are moving to the cloud, digital transformation, and workforces, everybody's almost working from home these days. Yeah, that's right. So um, yeah, security is much broader, as you say. And you know it includes a whole host of things. Uh, I mentioned configuration before. There's also outside influences. There's you know denial of service attacks. There's vulnerabilities. There's phishing that takes place. Uh, so you so you need to be able to take a look as things happen um, in your infrastructure and be able to react right away. And not only that, you need to also be able to go back and audit your environment so that if you do have a, a circumstance where something goes wrong, I mean if you look at some of the more more recent big stories like the one around the solar wind software for example you know wouldn't it be nice if you had been able to go back or see in real time when someone was accessing that information that shouldn't have or when there was activity uh, in your environment that even if you don't know who was doing it right but you know that there's nefarious activity going on um, and then you can start to trace back and see where it came from maybe somebody's deleting history for example of, of what they're doing on your account which is pretty common with people uh, trying to attack systems through whatever means that they gain, right? Whether it's whether they gain somebody somebody's password, um, or they try a brute force attack. You know, you, you know, if you look across the spectrum, you can see all of this activity. But somebody has to act on it. And so, if you can take a look at when those uh, when that activity is taking place, be able to detect it, uh, report out on it, maybe uh, take an action like stopping a particular container that's running, um, you're going to be in a much better place. And so, so you know, almost across the spectrum, no matter what the vulnerability is or no matter what the security implication is, if you can look at a very low level and see that there's activity that should not be taking place on a particular system, you can step in and stop it sooner. Um, and that's really what Falco is all about. Since you mentioned solar winds, and uh, there's also, it, uh, of course, people will always say things, but the fact is that if you look at how the backdoor, if it was open source, it's not that, you know, uh, open source is more uh, magically more secure, but as Linus told us, you know, uh, the law goes, you know, it, given enough eyeballs, our bucks are shallow. So somebody would sp spot it, somebody would see it. Um, so, uh, I mean, of course, more and more companies should embrace and release their code as open source. Uh, but in this report, uh, did you notice anything in terms of uh, increasing adoption of open source or decreasing adoption of open source? We did actually, yeah, and uh, especially Falco, which uh, if people aren't aware, Falco is the uh, CNCF project, open source project that we released um, uh, to the open source community a few years ago. Um, and it really provides rules that the community can uh, chime in on or create their own rules, contribute their own rules uh, so that they can detect when things are happening in their environment. Um, and we saw a really big jump in Falco downloads this year. In fact, it's a 300% increase in people, uh, in Docker pulls, people trying to uh, download and check out Falco. And that's really good to see. We also saw a big growth in uh, Prometheus metric usage. So, you know, it's not only open source, but I would say it's also open standards. You know, if we all uh, uh, participate and define the standards that we want to use, um, then like you say, we can catch some of these things hopefully earlier. It's not 100% perfect, but the more eyeballs you have looking at these things and the more agreement that we have 
you know, from company to company that this is the way that we're going to do things, um, then we've nominalized that behavior. And when there's a problem, we can go back and fix it much easier. So we definitely saw a an increase in uh, Prometheus metrics. You know, there are several ways that people collect data. One is Prometheus. Um, the other is by using something like a StatsD or a JMX uh, to pull metrics out of your environment. But Prometheus grew 50% this year, uh, over last year, at least for uh, the companies, our, our, our companies um, that use Sysdig. They're using a lot more Prometheus than they used to. You said that they are checking out Felco. I because it's open source, it's hard. But do you really know how many are kind of evaluating, experimenting versus how many are using in production? Yeah, that's a that's a, that one's a little bit more difficult because we do see the we see the downloads. Of course, we know from our customers since our product uh, makes uh, great use of Falco. We know from from our customers, but it's hard to see across the board. Um, I think the numbers this year were in, close to uh, twenty million uh, GitHub downloads. Um, so this is this is not people just taking a look and testing it out. This is people actually um, using it, you know, both in development and in production to catch vulnerabilities when they happen. Uh, Aaron, thank you so much for um, taking time from your schedule and talk about this report and also uh, talk about some of the trends that are going on we are seeing in this space, especially in the context of security, because that, of course, is going to become a really serious topic for this year, given the, the change uh, scenario around us. Uh, once again, thank you, and I look forward to talking to you again. Yeah, thanks for having me.